Hi, it's Dwyer. Keeping it free. Blogspot.com. If you want to see what a guy who wears hoodies looks like, just watch this video. In fact, uh, before this incident took place, I made several videos in which I was discussing boxing while wearing a hoodie. This is the United States of America. You get equal protection under the laws regardless of what you're wearing, right? There's no lower burden of proof. There's no demunition of your constitutional rights if you happen to be a black man wearing a hoodie. Now, with all due respect to Geraldo Rivera, um, someone I grew up watching on New York TV, and with all due respect to Fox News, which continues to push this hoodie angle as part of a top-down agenda, or so it seems, there's nothing wrong with lawfully walking down the street while holding Skittles, while holding a can of Arizona iced tea, and while being a black man wearing a hoodie. Right? Every time someone mentions this hoodie angle, you need to realize that there's an agenda attached to it that seems to suggest that people who wear hoodies have less protection under our laws, and that's simply not the way things operate. Right? This is a free country. Let's keep it free. Now let's talk about what's been happening in the news lately. George Zimmerman's defense which quite frankly doesn't square with some of the evidence. Right now, the defense is that Zimmerman, who there is tape of, right? There is a recording of his telephone conversation with the police where he says that he was following Trayvon Martin. Then, of course, there's the tone of the tape. Right, Zimmerman at one point in the tape is huffing and puffing. Clearly he is not just following Trayvon Martin. He is actively pursuing Trayvon Martin. Right, so we know that this encounter is caused at least in part by George Zimmerman stalking Trayvon Martin. Right? You can't look at the totality of the evidence and ignore the audio tapes that we have that are recorded. Well, understand, there is a witness who was on the phone with Trayvon Martin up until Trayvon's phone earpiece fell out of his ear. Now, Trayvon, apparently it started to rain a little bit. Let's get the full evidence. Trayvon's on the phone with his girlfriend. Trayvon ducks in under a little overpass to avoid the rain. Trayvon tells his girlfriend there is someone following him. Now understand, there is an age dynamic here. Zimmerman's in his late 20s. Trayvon is a teenager. I believe he's 17 years old. So this is a young person getting pursued by an older person. There's also a size dynamic here, right? Trayvon weighs, I believe, less than 170 pounds. George Zimmerman weighs about 250 pounds. So this is a teenager being stalked by a much bigger, older gentleman. Now, according to the girlfriend, Trayvon says to her, that someone is following him, right? She tells him to run. The timeline actually syncs with the timeline from the police conversation with Zimmerman, right? She tells Trayvon to run. Zimmerman on the police tape after being told by the 
police people not to follow him starts huffing and puffing. He literally starts pursuing Trayvon. Understand, if Trayvon starts running and Zimmerman doesn't run, nothing happens. I'm not here online making this video. Right now, understand, when Zimmerman catches up to Trayvon, right, Trayvon at some point stops running, Trayvon is still on the phone with his girlfriend, right? As you hear the spin out there in the community, just understand that when Zimmerman encounters Trayvon Martin, he is still on the phone. We know the exchange between the two guys, right? Trayvon, who Zimmerman's defense team now wants you to believe, attacked Zimmerman, right? Trayvon asked Zimmerman, this is according to Trayvon's girlfriend who was on the phone with him, why are you following me? You know, I would argue that that's a reasonable question, right? Some big guy comes up on you, right? You're younger, you don't know the guy. This might be a case of mistaken identity. He says, why are you following me? Zimmerman incredibly says to him, what are you doing around here? Think about that line. Think about the intent behind that line, right? Let me just say too, I don't know why we're giving so much credence to the idea that Zimmerman is on neighborhood patrol because he's not a cop and even if he were a cop, a cop would have absolutely no probable cause to harass a guy who just happens to be walking down the street with a bag of Skittles drinking an iced tea. I mean, come on, you know. So Zimmerman says, what are you doing around here? And what does Trayvon respond? Trayvon responds by asking him, why are you following me? That's the last line we know that Trayvon said. I would argue that that evidence is inconsistent with George Zimmerman's story that Trayvon attacked him. The only thing Trayvon attacked him with were intelligent questions asking what Zimmerman was doing, why Zimmerman was following him, right? That's, that's all Trayvon did. Well, after that, we know there's a scuffle. I believe the media is misreporting Florida's stand your ground law. Understand who has a legal basis to stand their ground. The guy who is pursuing an innocent guy right without any probable cause while carrying a firearm or the guy who's just on his way home holding a bag of Skittles a can of iced tea minding his business talking on the phone with his girlfriend right who exactly is standing their ground here I would argue that it's the guy who's minding his business who then has to deal with the older heavier stalker so let me just say this you know if Trayvon Martin did defend himself hold his ground and if George Zimmerman did get his nose broken understand that that evidence is not inconsistent with Trayvon Martin being a victim of a violent crime. I mean, literally being a murder victim, right? I would argue that there are many guys out there, myself among them, who if I'm walking down the street minding my own business and some heavy set guy is stalking me and comes up and tries to corner me and asks me a question of what are you doing around here? I think it's fair to expect me to feel like I have to defend myself. Now Thomas Sowell, a Hoover Institute fellow, um, I went to Stanford, I have the utmost respect for Thomas Sowell, he's written a piece where of course he criticizes Trayvon for wearing a hoodie 
But more importantly, he himself admits that he was once out and he actually had to pull a gun on a guy because the guy was pursuing him, coming up on him. It's the only time in Thomas Sowell's life that he had to pull a gun on a guy. Let me just say that the facts that Sowell, in a piece that isn't that sympathetic toward Trayvon Martin, the facts that Sowell posits in that piece, and I would encourage everyone to look it up. Sowell is spelled S-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Right, he's a uh, he's one of the giants in the world of economics. Um, the facts that Thomas Sowell posits in that piece literally mirror what happened to Trayvon Martin here, according to what his girlfriend heard on the other end of the phone. And let me just say, Sowell took his gun out to defend himself from a possible would-be attacker. He says the only reason he didn't squeeze the trigger was because the would-be attacker froze and didn't do another thing. Now here, all I can say is the pursuers George Zimmerman, according to the evidence we're learning from Trayvon's girlfriend, the pursuers George Zimmerman Trayvon Martin simply wants to know, why are you following me? As this bigger guy comes up on him. Just like Thomas Sowell pulled his gun, if Trayvon Martin decided he had to defend himself, well, isn't that what Florida's stand your ground law is about? Right? If we're going to discuss Florida's stand your ground law, it doesn't work in Zimmerman's favor. He's the pursuer. Doesn't it really work in Trayvon Martin's favor? In fact, doesn't the pro-Zimmerman media spin have this exactly backward? Let me also say this about the Stanford police. If you know that a guy on tape uses racial slurs right before killing a black guy and has a gun. Isn't that a guy who you would at least arrest to get him off the streets while you continue your investigation? You know, if you have an ear witness, not an eye witness, but an ear witness who literally is telling you that her deceased boyfriend complained about being stalked and then she heard him say to this guy why are you following me and the guy says to him what are you doing around here doesn't that piece of evidence alone warrant George Zimmerman's arrest and let me finally just say this too just as if a witness saw Thomas Sowell shoot a would-be attacker just as if that evidence wouldn't show that Sowell wasn't acting in self-defense. So too does evidence of Trayvon Martin wrestling with George Zimmerman not establish that Trayvon Martin, who we know was being pursued, right? You have an ear witness, you also have this police tape of George Zimmerman talking to police. We know he's being pursued. We know that Zimmerman pursued him after the police told him to stop. Right? The fact that these two men are seen wrestling, that doesn't negate the fact that Martin might have been pursued and might have felt that he had no choice but to stand his ground. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at keepingitfree.blogspot.com and also gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.